Uh, hi, so I'm David. Uh, I want to talk to you about a project that I'm uh, currently working on with Sabina Albrecht, who's here today, and uh, who doubles as my co-researcher and fiance. <laughs> so, so, uh, but uh, one of the many things that we have in common is a passion about refugees. And today uh, I'm going to try and present what uh, is a bit of a good news story in an otherwise quite um, bleak, bleak topic. So uh, as opposed to some of the other topics we've had today, you probably don't need very much motivation um, to talk about refugees. We're all pretty well aware of how big a problem it is. Um, we probably already know a lot about the numbers. You're probably most familiar with the bottom one there about the number of asylum seekers who come to Europe. At the moment, this is a flow that is not going to stop in the short term. Um, the numbers are going to keep growing, and that means that it's a global problem. Now, the numbers might not be as drastic in Australia, but certainly in terms of political capital, it's one of the hottest issues in Australia for the last couple of years. It's a big issue here, and we also have to discuss resettlement in Australia, particularly because of the issue of detention, which I'm not going to touch on too much today, but resettlement is really where I want to focus the issue. Um, both sides of politics can agree on this point, at least, and that is the fact that there are people who can't go back to their home, they have to go somewhere. What's the best way to do it? And also what we want to know is what, what are the effects on the host population as well? Because that's a discussion that, like I said, both sides of politics are, are interested in. Now, we could talk about the economic uh, effects, and as an economist you might expect that from me, but I'm not going to for the most part. There are some short-term negative effects, most likely. But in terms of the public debate, media, rhetoric, what do people really care about? It's, it's about the social and community uh, type effects, social value type things. It might be strange for an economist to talk about this, but these days we've moved into a few different directions as we've already heard about today. Uh, we do tend to put values now on social capital and there are some evidence of there being some negative social effects in terms of general migration and ethnic diversity, but almost nothing about refugee resettlement. And one of the reasons for that is it's really hard to disentangle the effect of labour pressures on refugees coming in. And that's because you have a whole bunch of people, a finite quantity, coming into an area where there are no new jobs created. Of course it's going to put pressure on the community, whether they're refugees or not. How do you disentangle the labour pressures from the actual social and community pressures of refugees? We searched far and wide to find an example where these labour pressures were taken out of the equation and we found a case study by accident in rural Victoria of all places. Now Australian towns in rural areas have very similar characteristics, declining populations, high labour demand. A lot of these towns are sort of in danger of going under so to speak because a lot of the, the working, highly skilled people are moving out. Now the town I want to talk about is called Nil. I thought no one here would have heard of it but it turns out James Daniels had a schnitzel there so <laughs> someone's been there at least. It's like many of these towns completely white, completely Christian, medium-sized population for a small town, but the town was going to go under and the largest employer, you may have heard of them, Love a Duck, they make duck-related products, they were going to have to uh, close their factory and they were desperate for workers. So they went to a Victorian NGO and said, do you have any refugees who might want to move there? Well, four refugees moved from the Karen people, that's a Burmese ethnicity, in 2009. Since that time, 200 in a town of a little over 2,000 Burmese refugees have come into a town that was completely white before. Now, what do you think would happen in rural Victoria? Well, it has been a huge success, huge success. Now, in economic terms, Deloitte actually came in, did a study on the effect of resettlement, said that over the course of these four to five years, there's been a net gain in terms of GDP contribution, 41 million, a huge number. But I'm not here as a strict economist today. I want to know about the social effects. Now, there have been some documentaries done, some newspaper articles about great community spirit and values, embrace and integration. But where I am a little bit of an economist. So I've got to get in there and I've got to get some quantitative data on that. So Sabina and I, we went there. We conducted a natural experiment, similar type of natural experiment that Sam explained before, to look at measures of trust in particular. Trust, trustworthiness, reciprocity in the area. Um, we also went to a whole bunch of control towns in the region that were similar in terms of their economic characteristics and so forth. It was tough work, not as tough as Sam's obviously, but tough work. No, actually, it doesn't look like it here, but we had to go around uh, with uh, not just questionnaires, but also with what we call a trust game, an economic measure to get sort of an objective measure of trust. What do you think you'd find in terms of this hard data? Do they trust people less now that the refugees came in? Well, not at all. Trust hadn't gone down 
whatsoever. But what we did find was that relative trust towards refugees in this town had gone up dramatically compared to the control town, something that current theories of migration and ethnic diversity would completely disagree with. That was quite an interesting finding, but the other things that were perhaps more interesting were that the attitudes of the refugees were off the charts in favour. Plus, locals felt, felt safer, volunteered more, and participated in more community clubs. And these are sort of fluffy measures, but they give some sort of feel that these social effects had actually gone up in this town from this natural shock of refugees coming in. Now, I'm not going to go so far as to claim that resettling refugees has these positive social effects, although that seems to be what we found in this case. What I'm going to say, as a very uh, you know, restrained sort of academic, is that there were no negative effects that would have been predicted and have been sort of said in the media and so forth without any hard evidence. As far as what made it work, the employment was definitely the key factor. That was sorted out when they got there. But there are other things that we think are key ingredients. Strong community leadership on both sides, very good communication. And also the inclusiveness of the refugee resettlement program, which I think is a key ingredient. And that is not just the workers were taken care of, but also their wives or their husbands and their children were made to feel a real part of the community in various ways. There were um, all sorts of community learning type centre programs. The little Burmese kids are playing in AFL teams in rural Victoria and doing incredibly well as well. So it was this real inclusiveness to make sure that every new member coming into the community felt a part of it. Now, there is one thing that we couldn't really control for and that's the effect of religion. These Karen were largely Christian, coming into a Christian area. Some of them were Buddhist. None were from, uh, none were Muslims, basically. That's something we haven't tested yet. There's been conflicting reports about what role that might play. But for the moment, we can say that there's a really positive sign that with a bit of care and a bit more research in this stream, there might be a chance for what we consider to be a smart resettlement program. And so going on to, I think it's going to come up in a second, what can Australian leadership look for in this area? We're in a unique position in that we have a lot of these sort of towns with declining populations needing workers coming in. So the job situation might be sort of already taken care of. We also don't have the huge flows in terms of numbers and also political pressures that Europe has at the moment. That puts us in a position where we can start to develop this recipe, if you like, for a guided, inclusive resettlement program that may actually tap into potential positive benefits of refugee resettlement, which is a mind blowing concept, really. And if we do that, not only would we be leaders in terms of the benefits for local Australians as well as the refugees, but we can take this recipe perhaps to places like Europe where there's a desperate need for this sort of research to be implemented.